Welcome to the March episode of The Healing Hour. Tonight, your hosts are going to be Albert Baca, the head of our Pasadena Clinic, as well as Soanne Park, one of our lead practitioners at our Santa Monica Clinic. Tonight's topic is counting sheep, how to get a solid night's sleep. Do you often dream of what it would be like to get a good night's sleep? Between caring for loved ones, house cleaning, to-do lists, and many professional responsibilities, sleep can start to feel like a luxury. Yet we really do need this complete body reset. And that's on a nightly basis that we need it. It needs to be consistent. So missing out on the recommended seven to nine hours of shut-eye nightly does more than you make you feel groggy and grumpy. Inadequate sleep also drains your mental abilities and puts your physical health at risk. The sleep struggle is real, but what if we help you discover techniques to beat the late night tossing and turning for good? This month, our very own experts on hand are here to teach you quick and easy ways to achieve a good night's sleep. Not only will you get to let go of the day more easily with the techniques that they'll be offering to you tonight, but you also might consider changing the way that you look at your lifestyle once they teach you about the traditional Chinese medicine, 25,000 year old practice of planning your day according to your internal TCM organ clock. Prepare for a night of sweet slumber. So once again, thank you, Albert and Soanne, for joining us tonight. Um, Let's see, let's jump right in. Albert, I'd like to ask you first of all, why is sleep essential for our overall well-being? Hi everybody, thanks for joining the call. Uh, thanks Tiffany for joining us. Thank you so on for being here with me. Um, I want to, really the biggest things about, the, about sleep itself is your physical health. I mean, that's, one, that's a big thing for right now. And it's like your, um, it's an important role your physical health, it's involved like of healing, there's repair of your heart and your blood vessels during that time. Um, there's a, if you have a big chronic insomnia or deficiency of sleep, that can lead to an increased risk of heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, being more prone to diabetes, even stroke. So, um, and not to mention that, you know, it increases the risk of obesity. Um, you know, the odds of that kind of go up also. Your hormone levels are get thrown off. And ultimately, it just doesn't, um, you know, it, it helps your, it doesn't help your performance either. So if you're on the type of jobs that offer, you know, you have to be physically active, that's harder for you to recover. That's harder for your muscles to recover. You get weaker faster. Uh, if you are in a, in a job that you really got to be on top of your game in regard to your mental clarity and thinking and problem solving skills, that can pose big problems too. Because uh, you're not just, you're not on top of your game as much. And uh, I know as being, being a father of two boys, I know when they have lack of sleep, I have lack of sleep and I'm not feeling as good as I do or refreshed as I can, um, which can also, you know, make me, you know, more impatient with things as well. So, you know, for those that are kind of prone to being a little more of a shorter fuse or less patient, um, that can become an issue too, because that can lead you down the road to, you know, uh, more anxiety, more depression and things of, uh, you know, higher risk in your life. So that's, uh, that's in a nutshell. You know, I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Okay, thank you. That's a very good lead in for us to understand what tonight's going to be about. Um, so Anne, question for you, please. What is the average amount of sleep that we're trying to achieve? Why is that? Mm. Um, there are big difference between the amount of sleep uh, you feel okay, and mm -hmm. then also the amount you, you need to function optimal. Optimally. So according to the National Institute of Health, the average adult sleep less than seven hours per night. Um, and then because we are so busy, right? So six, seven hours sleep may sound pretty good, but um, in re reality, it affects your quality of your life. So I want to share, uh, let me show this table. Okay. Can you see? Okay. Right, right. right there. That's perfect. Yeah. So this table shows average sleep needs by age. Okay. So if you look at this chart, you will notice there are different number of sleep sleeping hour per several like age category here. Mm -hmm. So the vertical axis shows nine different age groups, and okay. the horizontal this way horizontal axis represent hours needed. So which means require sleeping hour to 
I work, I work for optimal condition and then maybe, uh, let me see. So our word is here, right? Okay, yes. here. And then maybe appropriate means acceptable sleeping hour occasionally, but uh, not for long term. And also only for certain people. Okay. okay. So let's look at um, three age groups in highlight here. Mm -hmm. Because I believe most of you watching this healing hour maybe fall into more three this age group, age categories. Okay. So according to National Sleep Foundation, uh, sleep requires a very slight from uh, is very very slight from the person to person, mm -hmm. but um, most healthy adult needs between seven to nine hours. Seven between seven to nine, nine hours okay. per night to function at their best. But uh, children uh, here. I think I'm more on the children plan. Ideally, I would love to be able to sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Children, <laughs> teens, yeah, they yeah. even more because they are growing. And then even though our sleep needs increase with age, like uh, over 65 here, yes. still most older people still need at least seven hours sleep. Since um, older people often have like uh, uh, trouble sleeping in long, uh, this long at night. So we still recommend the daytime naps can still help to fill in, the, in the, this gap. So ideally, it would be good, let's say, with an older adult that they sleep continuously those seven to eight hours. But if not, at least being able to take a nap in the daytime would yes. help compensate for that? Okay. Yes. But uh, the nap time, I would recommend no more than like a 30 minutes. 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes is good enough. If you sleep too long during the daytime, it affects your like a nighttime too. You cannot fall asleep at night. Okay. Because you are not tired. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a quick note for those that are following along, because I see several people following on Facebook, and I see we also have several on Zoom. If you have questions, um, normally we have Leah moderating for us, but she is out tonight because she's on maternity leave. So I do see you on Facebook. I can't respond to your comments or it will um, play with our microphone, unfortunately. But if you type in any questions that you have into the comments chat box, on Facebook or on Zoom, we will get to those at the end of the episode and make sure that we respond to everybody. Okay, going back into our topic. Um, let's talk about more, more about sleep issues that keep someone from getting adequate sleep. You mentioned, Albert, a key one, being a parent and trying to keep up with your children. What else? What else would be relevant that, that could impact our sleep pattern? Well, along those same lines, um, you know, the children. Uh, stress is a big issue. Um, a lot of times we go to bed and we are too focused on other things besides just letting our body rest and recover. So whether it's, you know, a stressful job, relationship, uh, whether it be, you know, wife, husband, uh, you know, children, coworkers, um, a lot of these things can wear on us. And if we're going to bed with a full mind, then, um, then we can't be mindful, you know, in order to let it go for the rest of the night. And uh, so that's the big thing. Um, along with that stress that goes along with that, we don't create a restful environment for ourselves to take care of that, which I'm sure we'll get into later talking more about sleep hygiene, but preparing yourself to go to bed. And part of that is letting go of that stress because when we're stressed, unfortunately, our, and there's, a, there's a, you know, cortisol levels or hormone level of cortisol. It should be, you know, in the morning, it should be on the high side. And in the morning and at the nighttime, when you go to bed, it should be on the low side, ready for you to go to bed. So your body can be more relaxed and ready to just rejuvenate itself. And uh, so that's a big factor too. So when we get a lot of people, you know, having fluctuations of sometimes I get to bed okay. Other times I, you know, have trouble falling asleep. Sometimes I wake up a lot in the middle of the night. Uh, sometimes I wake up early and can't get back to bed. Those are, you know, a lot of times those are hormonal fluctuations. Um, since we're talking about hormones, uh, one of the things that wake people up, particularly uh, women, um, you know, past the age of 40 sometimes, tend to get hormonal fluctuations such as hot flashes going through menopause, hot flashes with night sweats, those kind of things can also be difficult. Um, so when we are getting woken up by those things, and, you know, of course, we, we try to turn to things uh, that can hopefully help us, like acupuncture, Chinese medicine can help those things as well. Um, pain can be an issue. We've heard of things such as the restless leg syndrome. 
you know, my shoulder hurts, my neck hurts, my back hurts, I can't find a proper sleeping position, I have arthritis that acts up and gets stiffer during the night. Uh, I just had a patient actually come in uh, today, as a matter of fact, and talk to me about that. She has trouble sleeping. And, uh, and part of that is because she has rheumatoid arthritis. And, um, you know, so she gets stiff throughout the night. So by the time morning comes around, she wakes up early because she feels like her legs and, and feet and fingers and wrists are just so tight. And so I gave her some, uh, uh, some advice and uh, guidance in order to help with that as well. Um, the yeah. other thing in regard to some of the things that we can, that keeps them from getting adequate sleep, um, eating too late. Sometimes people just eat too late and uh, eat too late or they drink too late. Um, I wish that could cause that too. Sorry? Well, I mean, ideally you should be trying to get to bed, give your, to try to give yourself that seven to nine hour sleep. But, you know, think about like, you know, 11 o'clock would be kind of like the latest as far as you want to get to if you're going to be waking up around, you know, 6, 6 a.m. onward. So that'd probably be a good amount of time. And we'll talk about organ clock later. So it'll give you a little bit more specifics on that. Um, but so to kind of, you know, stop eating, uh, don't go to bed with a full stomach. Don't have a lot of water before you go to bed. Uh, cause that for, for those that have like a smaller bladder, well, that's going to wake them up in the middle of the night and that interrupts their sleep also. So those are, those are kind of some of the big things that I, I think about when I think about, are you getting enough sleep? How are you preparing yourself for that? Okay. Thank uh, you. And sure. uh, so uh, maybe can you build off of that and just explain to us what are some of the side effects that will happen? When mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you might have experience if you don't have enough sleep, next day you feel, of course, you feel very tired. And then also you cannot think uh, properly and then you cannot make a good decision, right? Like uh, not only for like an important exam, even when you drive, um, if you don't, uh, some study they show if you being awake for 18 hours means maybe you you didn't have a good sleep the night before, mm -hmm. and, and then if you drive just like a driver like a, um, if you you have like a blood alcohol level of 0 0.05, and then for reference 0 0.08 is uh, considered drunk, mm -hmm. so it explains how dangerous can be right, awesome. so yeah, and also yeah. We think it's very normal. Occasionally, if you have like a sleep loss or difficult to fall asleep, difficult, you know, have a good quality of sleep is normal. But if it become chronic, um, we call it this medical term insomnia. And then also this insomnia condition actually need treatment because it affect your like, um, not only your mood, mood means like a feel moody and irritable and then also very impatient. And because um, your body not able to handle stress as you, as much as you you know you used to before, and also like um, um, your, your mental sharpness because you cannot really concentrate and then you can concentrate in learning and then also um, and then some like a memory problem too. You cannot remember word and can it's just like me <laughs> cannot remember some words or I cannot make a proper numbers and things mm -hmm. and then also um I can reduce your create create um reduce some problem like a solving skill and difficulty making decision and then also it presents some premature aging sign skin is more wrinkle on your skin and also more gray hair and the reduced libido those things and they will also weaken your immune system too. If you did, didn't have a good sleep for a few days and the next day, if someone cough next to you, you're gonna get um, cough too. You're gonna start coughing too. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, another thing is in serious case, it's, it's, it's of course some health condition like a stroke and the diabetes and obesity and the high blood pressure and the heart disease and also uh, some Alzheimer's and then some type of cancer too, because your immune system is already declined. Yes, yeah. mm. Is everybody listening? This is a good enough reason we all want our sleep. That was a long list and a very <laughs> challenging <laughs> list. <laughs> the one more you might interest in, like uh, weight loss, right? Yes. If you well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have 
you might notice if you didn't have good sleep, next day you're craving more like food and more sugary food, special sugary yes, food. Because me, sugary yeah. food, that is me. <laughs> because there are two, like a, two hormones in your body regulate your like a normal feeling of hunger and then oh. fullness. Ghrelin is stimulate your appetite, while uh, leptin actually sends a signal to your brain when you are full. But uh, if you don't have if you don't have enough sleep, ghrelin level goes up. So then that means you st it's stimulating your appetite, and then you want more food than normal. So that means you cannot be really satisfied with a you know normal amount of food. Mm -hmm. So eventually you gain more like a um, fat fat special in your waistline area. Yeah. That's why we need more sleep. We need a good quality of sleep, good amount of sleep. Okay. Um, okay. Wow. I mean, that's a lot to intake. I, I really hope everybody was listening to that list. Uh, but if not, you can catch this on replay. Um, let's, okay. So I want to, I'm really interested to hear about the TCM organ system. But before we do that, I have another question for Albert. Albert, in view of everything that Suan just talked about, um, where do you feel most people go wrong when they're preparing their ritual, their sleep ritual? Number one, and I'm guilty of this myself, um, but being on your phone before bedtime. Mm -hmm. um, have, why even watching TV before bedtime? You know, a lot of people go to sleep, you know, like watch a show or watch the news, which is the news I think is a bigger culprit. Um, because then you're looking at stuff that's, uh, you know, that's not exactly pleasant before you're going to sleep. You know, it's like watching like a thriller cop show, th you know, you know, some kind of scary movie before going to bed. Probably not the best thing to relax your body before going for a restful slumber. Um, but the blue light with TVs, the blue light from cell phones, iPads, any kind of tablets um, creates, uh, it basically mimics the sun. So that's a big factor because now you're telling your body to go to sleep in the middle of the daytime because you're basically uh, you, um, almost like a placebo effect. You're, you're, you're giving it that blue light right before going to bed. So it's like, why, do I should, why should I sleep if it's daytime outside? And it actually stops the, uh, the, it's called the, uh, the melatonin from being dispersed in your body. So melatonin is a neurochemical that basically gets, gets turned on and uh, distributed in your body when you're uh, in a darker environment. Mm -hmm. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying, getting rid of that blue light, whether it be those cell phones, tablets, TVs, uh, at least an hour before bedtime and start dimming the lights. So that way everything, you know, that melatonin starts to kick in and you actually start getting a little bit sleepier. Um, another one of the things that people go wrong is keep in mind that we are creatures of habit. So we need, and our body gets trained as such. So if we, you know, spend Friday night out, we're out till midnight. If we spend, you know, Saturday, maybe we're out till 11, we have a big meal, we go out with friends. Sunday comes around, we're like, oh, let's go to sleep at a reasonable hour. I've got work tomorrow again. Then you might have a little trouble getting back into things. You know, so, you know, keep those things in mind as you go along. Um, it's not like you can really make up sleep. Some people think mm -hmm. that, oh, I just, you know, I slept five hours or four hours this night because I was out having a good time. Um, and I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll take a nap during the day or I will, you know, I'll sleep 10 hours the next night. And a lot of times you can't even get that 10 hours in. It's broken up because your body's used to having a rhythm of when it wakes up. Um, so it's hard to make up that sleep and, and be able to do that. And then that just kind of, it throws all your rhythms off. So like I said, being a creature of habit, like, I, you know, we have a sleep routine that we put our, child, our children to bed. So think of that as, as, you know, you're your own child. How would you treat yourself in that regard? Um, another thing is uh, being too hot in the room. Uh, I know particularly, in, you know, a lot of times the women like the room a little bit warmer than the men do. They tend to run a little, a little bit colder and so forth. Um, so they'll want the, the heat turned up or extra blankets on them. And I know for me, like, I like a colder room. I'll wear like a light long sleeve shirt and have a colder room. And your body wants to be regulated uh, to a, your, your body actually slows, uh, cools off in the middle of the night by one to two, to two degrees. And so you can, you know, having that environment as a colder environment to kind of match that a little bit is actually better for your sleep where you can grab a cover and cover yourself 
versus throwing all the covers off and then pulling it back on again, throwing them off and pulling them off. So um, that's the one thing I'd, I'd worry about. Okay. I just divide my bed in half. <laughs> my side has layers and layers of blankets and the other side doesn't. <laughs> yep, that's one way to do it. <laughs> okay, well, let's jump into this concept of um, TCM planning your day according to can you please explain for us, Soam, what is this practice and then how, what are the steps guiding us through this? And then I'm going to have Albert build on to that. Okay. So maybe most of you are familiar with this terminology, like TCM organ clock. So let me explain about TCM internal organ clock first in order to explain why you're waking up around the same time every night and then um, and not able to back to your sleep and then um, what this means and how to, you know, how to help your sleep, your pattern, this pattern, okay? okay. So let, um, let me see. Let's turn to this diagram. Can you see this? Yes. Can you uh, angle, yeah, just down a little bit, tiny bit down there, perfect. And then to the window, okay. Better? Good. Yeah, oh, okay. better. That so, wow. Okay. So similar to the idea of like a circadian rhythm. So this traditional um, traditional Chinese medicine explained the rhythm of our body based on this 24 hours TCM clock. So if you look at this, uh, there's like a time here, right? Sunlight 6 a.m. Yes. And then 8 a.m., 10 a.m. And then this is noon, 2 p.m. 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., like a 10, you know, it is time, okay? Mm -hmm. So so this same organ clock divided into two hours sec, uh, sections. So okay. it's a two hour section. So for example, like a gold bladder, one, uh, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. here, right? So two sections correspond to um, each organ. And then uh, this time, your uh, your blood and chi enter this organ here. So okay. between 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., your uh, blood and chi circulate in the gold blood area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, and then so that's um, so so like if you waking up between this time, 1 p.m. to uh, 11 p.m. to 1 a, uh, 1 a.m., it means you need to take care of your gold bladder. So how? So try to reduce some like a fat intake and consuming consuming more healthier fat, like avocado or some um, good like a nut. Mm -hmm. um, since a gallbladder is responsible for breaking the fat down, so on emotional level, our body we cannot separate separate uh, body, mind, and the emotions. So we have to always look at all three together. And emotion, emotional level, this um, signified uh, you are holding some like a heavy, heavy feeling or bit, bitterness or, or resentment. In so, your gold yeah, in okay. your gold bladder, just like heavy fat, heavy okay. fat stay in your in your deep inside your your inside your mind. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you it will be like a beneficial to reflect on your like relationships and then release some negativity blocking energy in your system. Okay, and then let's move on to next one. Between 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Okay. This is, this is liver time. That means your liver, if you're waking up always around this time, your liver is overloaded. Because your liver is responsible for detoxifying your body and the processing some emotions, like a more anger and then some depression. Those emotions is affect your liver. So for example, um, let's think back to the night when you had like a too much alcohol or intense frustration at work. You you may you know notice you wake up around this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so let's make sure to drink alcohol in moderation or even you know reduce reduce um, consumption and to find a way to deal with your stress in in the healthy way. Okay, so let's, let's involve some like, exercise or some meditation or even some consultation so you can, you know, release some stress in your life. 
and then you will notice your sleep gonna be much better. And around 3 a.m., yeah, okay. 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., mm -hmm. this is a long time. This is a long time. So that means there's something imbalance in your lung. And then especially is breathing. So, so um, if you have any like blockage, blockage, so it um, uh, affect your ability to take a deep and proper breath, that you might notice you waking up around this time. Also, it's linked to emotional factors such as grief, uh -huh. as a result of some like a dealing with a loss in your family or in your relationships. So try to practice some abdominal breathing, deep breathing. So breathe in through your nose and then breathe, breathe out through your mouth. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out using your abdomen instead of your chest. Okay. And there also um, meditation and there's some yoga. Those exercises also help your like a lung health and then release some grief too. If you, the last one, if you wake up between 5 a.m to 7 a.m., which is relatively okay, right? <laughs> so if you wake up around this time, that means um, your large intestine, this is large intestine time. So trying to tell you like, um, you are like, you feel, you feel like a stuck, something stuck in your system. So it can be um, you are physically something stuck inside, like, um, like a, a constipation, or some digestive issue, the digestive waste stays inside your system, or emotion, like a lingering negative, some emotion that overwhelmed you and that you cannot move forward. So let's try to release the lingering, lingering emotion and then um, practice, you know, go forward. Okay, yeah, this is the uh, TCM organ clock. That's fascinating. So, um, okay, I, I I want first of all, Albert, go ahead and add in what you want to add to Suan's. But I think we all must have questions, and I'm going to be kind of monitoring both Facebook and Zoom too, uh, because I think to myself, okay, if that organ system is being impacted, what time of the day do I have to be counteracting that? And you know, more ideas for how to counteract these things. Um, just to add on, um, you know, so on mentioned in regard to, uh, emotions and I, that, that tends to, that's a big factor in what we do in Chinese medicine because the emotions have a huge factor on what our body does. So when we're angry, things rise, when we're sad, things descend, um, and so forth. So we want to, we want to watch out for those types of things. And in regard to the liver, you know, waking up between one and 3 a.m., if there is uh, any kind of repressed stress, repressed anxiety, or you know, repressed frustration during that time, um, you may find yourself consistently waking up night after night, you know, during this time between one and three a.m. during the liver time. Um, in, in Chinese medicine, we talk about the liver governing and storing the blood. So, not sleeping during this time can actually affect the liver, especially for females because of the importance of blood for menstruation, even those for already through menopause, but some symptoms that can manifest to an imbalance in that liver area because it governs and stores blood is anemia, irregular menstruation, headache, even chronic fatigue, right? If you don't have blood in your system, it's not running through there properly in order to give you enough energy to do so. So that was one of the things that I thought about the liver and specifically for the blood and a lot of our, a lot of our patients. Um, the gallbladder between 11 and one. The gallbladder is known to, uh, is to be the center of like decision-making and even self-esteem uh, during between 11 and one. So if you're, if you're not in bed by that time between 11 and 1 a.m., then you're actually consuming your gallbladder's energy. Okay, so now, now you're having a little bit more digestive difficulties, poor judgment, and that could even lower your self-esteem a little bit going on there because that's in charge of that going on. So yeah, stay away from all the fatty foods, but you know, think about how you're treating yourself and, and especially the liver and the gallbladder, such, um, such organs of detoxification in our body. So not in, in physical and emotional detoxification as well. So, and to see how that affects your body.
So I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have a question for you then. You know how yeah. they say, for you both, uh, you know how they say that some people are night people, some people are morning people. Mm -hmm. What you were just talking about, about impacting the gallbladder and that there are also these emotional manifestations, manifestations, let's say, by sabotaging yourself with feeling not the highest self-esteem and whatnot. Does that mean when a person is felt at ease saying, oh, I'm a night person, I like staying up late, in effect, they're just not realizing that they've, they've kind of numbed out this piece of themselves? That could be part of it, but it'd also be just kind of running on, like burning the candle at both ends, mm -hmm. you know, so it may catch up to them. Um, I, uh, I, I'll share, my, my brother lived in Las Vegas for about four years uh, while he was out there. He was in the Air Force um, and he would fly and, and do all this stuff all day long. And then at nighttime they would go out and they'd have a great time. And by, you know, past two o'clock in the morning, probably even longer than that, um, you'd they'd get to bed and then they'd sleep for a few hours and redo it all over again. Right. One of the things that I teased him incessantly about was how old he looked after those three years, after three to four years after being in Las Vegas and running that kind of schedule that he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then once he moved away from there, he's like, he started refreshing himself and doing other things. But it's amazing what that body does to you, um, you know, by not having enough sleep and replenishing yourself during this time period. It's really, really interesting. Well, uh, I want to edit something yeah, about this. I yeah. to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, sleep time is also important because um, in Chinese medicine, our perspective, we have this organ clock. And con um, but at, at the same time, in conventional medicine, they also talk about um, the importance of um, sleep time. Mm -hmm. So between one uh, between 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is is called golden time because those at this time period our body releases some growth hormone. So what growth hormone does is like for children let them grow properly, right? For adult is actually rejuvenate our body. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important to like uh, go to bed and then ready to sleep between uh, at least you know, no later than you know, 10 or 11, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you go to bed like uh, 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then sleep for like, um, like uh, eight, eight hours until 10 a.m., so it's different. You're gonna lose the, the golden time, golden time for four hours, yeah. These eyes, they need yeah. the time. <laughs> 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 okay, so how about if you both give us tips then on how to continue maximizing based on this system of um, planning your daily routine around the TCM Morgan clock, how can we maximize these principles? Walk us through what to, to continue doing. I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about the heart. Mm -hmm. um, the heart has like an aver the heart, I'm sorry, the heart is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's kind of mid midday here going on. And I mean, the heart, you know, a major blood vessel going home, major, major blood organ in our body. Um, but the heart has an aversion to anything being too hot. Right. So if everybody, you know, the heart does not like being heated up in that sense. And so, uh, you know, having stress, uh, high intensity exercise, um, you know, the caffeine, uh, everything and it agitates the heart going on in that way. So, so an imbalance during this time uh, can lead to palpitations, shortness of breath, even cold hands and feet. Um, so one of your best things to do during between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. is to really stop, relax, enjoy your lunch. That'd be a great opportunity to connect with others because then you're connecting from a heart relationship going along with that time period. Maybe you can connect a little bit differently uh, during that time and, uh, and to avoid stress, maybe take a nap or a little siesta during that time, which would be a great thing to do as well. Um, I think about the time right now, for instance, between five and seven, uh, between five and seven is our kidney time. Okay. Now our kidneys are responsible for, you know, reproduction, development, growth. Okay. Our, our reproductive system. Um, so we got to feed it and nourish that and having a small, healthy meal, you know, during this time with the eating between five and seven would be a great time to do that. 
and that would help our own life force. We talk about essence in Chinese medicine. It's kind of like what we have our genetic essence, right? And then we also have the, that we uh, that we take in all day long, and whether whether it be food, emotions, sight, air, uh, nutrients, and, and that's uh, another part of our life force. So we want to make sure that our kidneys are strong, so that way we don't show up as having a um, you know a lower life force, being fatigued, having premature grain. Um, you know, low back pain, maybe have your uh, libido's a little bit lower, have more gray hairs. So that's a great way to nourish that kidney between uh, 5 and 7 p.m. Okay. So kidney, nourish it through actual food. And we're looking for that's, nourishment through foods. Yeah, so healthy. if a person eats a little bit later, they could still have a small snack at that point and then regroup for family dinner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. What else? Keep telling us. <laughs> so, on you got one? Mm, from my own experience, uh, I remember when I was, especially when I was in school, mm. um, I had like a, yeah, this is a sleep problem. <laughs> I always wake up around 1 30 a.m. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of st stress from the worry and stress from study and then also future, <laughs> those things. So I remember um, I practice um, like a practice this one. Is, have you heard about Cinderella time? Cinderella time, returning time or something. So that means, so don't carry everything um, carrying to the next day. Mm -hmm. So everything should be, you know, you have to finish by midnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of worry, a lot of like a thought in your mind, you know, don't carry to um, move on to after midnight. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it actually I talk to everyone about mind dumping before you go to bed at night. Grab a journal or just grab a piece yes. of paper and write out every single thing that's. Yep you just write it let it go and just say to yourself i'm letting go of what i need to let go of and more is coming to me of what i need to come Bye. Because, yeah because it's nice a reality one. we cannot do anything middle of night right so yeah. if you have a good sleep the night and next day you have more things to do you know more you, you have more you can spend more reproductive you know day and then also, I remember, um, since our life is very, very busy, right? So yeah. I have a little tip, like if you are really busy, like uh, you have something like a due, due line or something, so mm -hmm. you can only sleep for four or five hours. Mm -hmm. So instead of like um, uh, awake until, uh, stay up on, until like a 2 a.m., just go to bed 10 p.m. and then wake up around the 4 a.m. and then do your, start your day. So it's, it's better to, be. to sleep yeah. earlier and wake yeah. up earlier instead. Yes, of yes, yes. Tip. Because okay. if you oh, uh, stay up night until 1.30 a.m. or 1 a.m., 2 a.m., the next day you you it's like a, even you you cannot see it clear here because it's liver time. It's nourish your eyes. Oh. And then you have pink or red eye next day. Yeah. Okay. So. Make if sure. you wake up at 4 a.m., then it's going to be your intestine. So you're just going to the bathroom. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you're eliminating during that time. You're actually you're letting go of those kind of things too. So having yeah. breaths of fresh air, it's like you're waking up and then you're 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 you have breaths of fresh air. You're like, all right, now I need to let go of yesterday's stuff, and now, yeah. now I want to go into the spleen time, and I want to nourish myself. It's like the, the, you get stimulated during that, what, 7 o'clock to 9 a.m., uh, 7 to, you know, 9 to, 9 to 1, 9 to 11 area going on there. And so it's like all the digestive juices are now stimulated in your body. It's actually yelling, feed me. Give me, a, uh, you know, give me a, a hearty, healthy breakfast in order to fuel my day. Um, you know, so establish an eating routine so, so your digestive system can actually sync up to everything. Mm -hmm. And so a good rule of thumb is actually have, because your digestive fire is stronger in the morning, mm -hmm. then you want to eat a bigger digestion, bigger meals during that time. Is it that drives me crazy when people say like, really 
yeah, I think it's actually better to have a biggest breakfast, you know, not biggest, but have a, a fairly large breakfast so it can fuel you through the day because your digestive juices are at the strongest during that time. Not only that, but now we're talking, if we look at the organ clock, 12 midnight is being the utmost yin. All right, yin and yang, right? So yin and yang, we talk about yang being very active and very like, let's go out and conquer the world kind of feeling. That's the sun, that's the activity, that's exercise, that's, that's eating, that's, that's speaking really loud. Whereas the yin time is like, <clears throat> it's the moon, it's the restful, it's the calmness, it's the, it's the black versus the white, it's the, um, it is the, uh, you know, feeling like our body should rest and rejuvenate during that time. So if we look at midnight, our, that's the time we should be sleeping during that time. And by the time we get around to 6 a.m., the yang time is actually starting to perk up a little bit. So that's where you start to get into, you know, your large intestine, your stomach, your spleen, your heart being at noon. Yes. So if you have your biggest meals in the morning, then you're by noon time, it's like it's getting into that heart area at around a little later is the small intestine after that where a small intestine is in charge of assimilating it, everything that you've been eating and uh, to be going through your system at that point. And, and then, you know, you get back in, that starts to roll back into your, your uh, young time. I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, getting excited about it. Um, fascinating. But point being, digestive system strongest in the morning when the young is starting to peak and then he goes a little bit higher. Now you're starting to get the utmost, you know, your, your, um, your stronger yang time, your stronger activity time. And then it starts to wane around 6 p.m. So around this time, it's starting to wane and starting to go back in at the yin time. So we don't want to have our biggest meals now. We want to have our smaller meals now because we're getting closer to the yin time and furthest away from our digestive fire being the strongest. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, so Andy, you wanna to add to that? Anything that you wanted to add to that? No, okay. Um, let's talk about, well, let's talk about acupuncture. So we've been you know, talking about this system. We've been talking about what happens to your body when it's sleep deprived. Let's talk about acupuncture and how acupuncture actually supports better sleep for us. Mm -hmm. uh, acupuncture, because inside your and over all over your body, there are like an important acupuncture point, mm -hmm. added as some promoting your healthy sleep. Mm -hmm. So since everyone is different, the symptom different, the cause is different. So each acupuncture treatment can be very like a very is it can be very different. But um, so acupuncture, what it does is like regulate your system, is reboot your system and modulate your system too. So okay. if someone has a lot of stress, so acupuncture needle stimulate your brain. So your brain can release some neurochemicals like um, endorphin, dopamine, and then also like um, endorphin, dopamine, serotonin things. So make you really calm and rest and then ready for uh, good sleep. Mm -hmm. And then also if someone has some like a physical problem like pain, chronic pain, Pain can affect your sleep too. So if you have chronic pain, acupuncture treatment can release some pain, help, help pain. And also if you have some digestive issues, so acupuncture treatment can release digestive issues too. So acupuncture treatment treat the root, root and causes of your sleep, um, sleep loss, sleep problem. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about, uh, what about like over the counter products? Cause we don't always have people located in the places that we have practices or maybe in their city. It isn't easy to get over to an acupuncturist. What are we able to provide as over the counter support for them as well? So I've got patients when they come into our center, you know, we usually give them a customized herbal formula with Chinese medicine where we literally put you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, making potions into a formula and giving them that for their restful health based upon their specific constitution or their specific situation that day. Uh, but a lot of times they come in and go, well, what can, I, what can I give to my daughter who lives in San Francisco that's having a lot of sleep and anxiety issues? And I'm like, well, let me give you some over the counter. She can try it out. And if she likes it, she'd go so forth. And then when she comes back down, we can give her a consult and give her something a little more specific. 
And the ones that I lean to for those guys are our, our sleep and our calm remedies. Now these are, these are Infinity products. Turn that around a little bit. Um, so they're based upon Chinese herbal, Chinese herbal medicine to be able to do this. So what's the nice thing? So it's got some jujube seeds. It's got some licorice root, uh, some, gard some gardenia going on in there. Um, you know, the calm one has uh, some lily bulb, a little wild yam, a little romania, which is good for the yin that we talked about earlier. Um, so these, these, both these remedies are, you know, you don't have to take them both together. You can do one or the other, of course, but they do, they are helpful together, actually. Uh, there's a little overlap in them as well. Uh, yeah. But those are the ones we, we tend to recommend okay. going along with that. I know um, on our part, our training, we learned that calm is really good to take in the daytime, whereas mm -hmm. sleep is the one we're taking a couple of hours before we're preparing for bed. A little more at nighttime, exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, along with those, um, we have some, a couple different things. So, and then, oh, we have the aromatherapy guys as well. Okay. And these I love, especially for people that are traveling a lot. Um, just to put these things in your bag, they're basically just, you know, roller, roller on. So you basically just grab them and just kind of put them on your wrist or put them behind your ear. Um, and that way you have a little bit of aromatherapy, you know, going to sleep with. And, uh, you know, for airplane flights, uh, they can be uh, gentle on children as well. You know, so if you're, if you need to go somewhere where it needs to things calm down a little bit, then that's, that's going to be helpful as well. Um, in pain situations, um, there's the tension, tension roller. Okay. Okay. The tension roller has, you know, some winter green, some sesame oil, a little bit of uh, fennel and eucalyptus going on. It smells really good. It can actually help clear up sinuses. Um, but you can basically use this for, um, you know, anything if your joints are feeling a little sore, either before going to bed or, or maybe you worked out hard that day and you can put it around your knee or, or your wrist or, you know, wherever else that may be aching your joints so they don't stop you from sleeping well. Okay. So that's our tension roller. Okay. Um, what else do we have? There's the five elements of health. Mm -hmm. These are actually, you know, they're capsules that are, you know, pretty encapsulated. There's about 240 capsules in here. Um, but this works as from the five element, uh, five element perspective. So when you're looking at the five elements of health, you know, you got your wood, fire, earth, metal, water, uh, each element relates to an organ in your body. So it goes to show that more, the more balanced each organ is to do its particular job, the more balanced you will be, and that'll probably help you get you a better slumber as well. So and these can be taken. Back to our organ system clock that you're, now you're getting specific, okay, what do I need to nourish and knowing this is going to nourish. Yeah, exactly. Now, th this is a uh, the balance and longevity, uh, you know, uh, formula going on here, and this is over the counter through Infinity, and we also have them at every every Tau Wellness uh, Center, so Pasadena, Newport Beach, and, and Santa Monica. Um, but they do also sell specific uh, um, organs as well. So there is one for the wood, for the liver. There's one for the metal, for the lung. Um, so to be able to do that as well so if you find a certain dysfunction uh you're, you know you talk to your practitioner they tell you a little more about it um then you can target an organ to get uh yourself a little bit stronger in that organ and uh i believe if you go on infinity.com don't you have you guys have the test on infinity.com you want to yeah. say some more about that Tiff? yeah so we have um it's actually now dowstar.com it's t-a-o-s-t-a-r dot com and we have a free quiz you can take to find out what element you are and at the end of that quiz um, is a video where it explains to you about your element profile. And um, it's actually a video that Dr. Mao prepared uh, for our audience. And he specifically talks about, okay, these are the physical um, benefits and challenges faced by a particular element. These are the emotional things that you need to be aware of. Um, these are some of the spiritual considerations that you want to take into account as well. And so it works as a roadmap to start guiding you um, to understand that your lifestyle is based on your element and how can you best navigate that journey. Um, and once you know what element you are, then you're able to better understand um, what some of the other formulas are that are going to support you. So just like Albert was saying, and for instance, I'm a fire. So I know that for fire, I would take the fire formula. The five elements formula is also beneficial to me. 
um, I'm very heart centric. But the funny thing as well is that I'm also impacted by my breathing too. So in the case of, um, you know, what we were looking at today with the TCM clock, I need to be aware, okay, I am that individual that wakes up at 4 a.m. So for my lung health, perhaps I also want to be focusing on uh, the metal formula too. Um, and so you are able to, you start to learn more and more about your element. You learn about foods that are beneficial to you and are going to support you as well. Um, it, it just, it gets fascinating to be able to see these different discussions. And of course we have many books on this and we have meditation CDs that are specifically designed for each element as well. One of my favorite CDs, I don't know, if it always gets stolen from my office. Do you all have the five elements CD there? I don't have it with me. I've got the Sleep and the Calm CDs, yeah. Yeah, so Sleep and Calm are fantastic for listening to right before um, you go to sleep. And if you want, you can get it in a download or in a CD. Um, but we have another one that is the Five Elements Background Music. It's pure music. Um, but Dr. Mao specialized, he basically customizes for each element. He worked with the sound engineer and they customized for each element. And so um, each tonation that you're listening to is actually nourishing your specific element. It's fascinating. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and it's one of our best sellers. So that's another um, item that's really good to, to consider. Um, but enough about that. I think, you know, we're coming up on the hour and I want to give time to letting everybody ask their questions too. Plus we have people email in some questions to us. Um, so maybe for all of you in the audience, if you can please take a moment right now to type in any questions that you have, please type them into your chat box if you are on Zoom or if you're on Facebook, you have a chat box as well, please type those questions in. And then, um, so Anne, would you like to start by um, just wrapping up any last thoughts that you'd like for us to understand on this topic of sleep? Mm, okay, so maybe you, you guys want to know some tip for the like um, acupressure point. Yes. Right? yes. <laughs> yeah. So if you look uh, behind your 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 neck. Uh -huh. It's an acupressure point called Anmian, it's which okay. is translates to peaceful sleep. That's so where there's a little divot? Yes. Okay. Yeah, locate, location is like a point behind your ear, between uh -huh. your ear and then base of your skull, where it is like a depression, it's called mas mastoid process. Okay. So it's right here. Between? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Place place your finger on this depression and apply like a pressure in uh -huh. circular motion. Okay. So massage this area. So you can use two hands to massage to both sides like this. And then after circling like about hundred times, mm -hmm. maybe you you're gonna feel more like a relaxed and then ready to sleep. So massage this area. Oh, that's fantastic. We could do that to children too then. Yes, right? yes, yes. Ooh, so I love it. If, if, it's, if you still don't know where, where the location is, just like gently massage entire neck. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, it's still helpful here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a wonderful tip. Thank you. You're welcome. And Albert, what would you like to share with us? You need to talk. Uh, I, I, that was a really good tip. <laughs> I talked about the, the dimming the lights. Uh, you mentioned the journaling, getting rid of, you know, a data dump into paper um, activity. Um, make sure nothing, not having too much activity, but, but stretch a little bit. I mean, you could like, you know, you could, you could rotate your neck around, rotate your shoulders, you know, rotate your back. If you want to sit on the floor and touch your toes. If you want to, you know, like roll around a little bit, uh, you know, just to, just to massage your muscles and things like that. Have a partner, enjoy that intimate time with each other, you know, to do that as well, uh, to help relax ourselves. Um, and then also like dimming the lights. And uh, if you wanna, you know, if you don't necessarily wanna wake up the crack of dawn, make sure you have something to block out the sun in the morning. And if you don't have that option, I um, mean, hotels are awesome for that because they have those big old blackout ones, you know, but we don't always have that luxury. Um, but even like an eye mask, you know, could do the trick. Uh, even, you know, putting, just facing the other direction. Um, one of the ways that uh, um, 
a Dallas Technique what, talked about the best position to sleep in and talked about sleeping on your right hand side. Sleeping on your right hand side and with your kind of, kind of like you're tucked in here like this on your side with a, with your with your um, your knees slightly one one let's see I think it was the left leg kind of bent a little bit and kind of in a fetal position your right leg straight down and, and the reason it, it worked on this is because you're adding a little pressure and a nice caress to your liver your liver is located underneath your right rib cage. So while you're sleeping on your right hand side, you can actually feel that pressure nice on your on your liver gallbladder, as we talked about. And then your stomach is in on the other side, a little bit more middle to the other side on the left. And that is uh, how she has a little bit more free uh, opening space in order to kind of do its job and uh, and digest all your food, anything that was left over during that time. So it's actually a nice way to kind of get a restful sleep. So you combine, you know, position like that after some stretching and maybe a bath um, and uh, even a nice little meditation, whether it be a guided meditation like you were talking about, Tiffany, uh, or just, you know, some light five, 10 minute breathing exercise abdominally um, can, can really help your, uh, can really help your sleep patterns to get yourself the best night of sleep as you can. Okay, thank you. That was really good as well, too. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to start opening this up to questions, if that's all right with both of you. So the first question we have is, um, do you take two sleep capsules per night, and for how long can you stay on the sleep formula? If you're, let's see, so the sleep formula that I was presenting to you earlier, the Infinity product, is that right, Tiffany? Yeah. Um, I'd say you could, I mean, I would take, you, it depends on how much, how, how severe your sleep patterns are. So if you, if you feel like you need a, if you had a severe sleep problem for a while, honestly, I would even take a little bit more. I mean, you could take up to four, you know, and see how, how that feels. Um, cause it is based upon a Chinese medicine, medicinal formula. And so you can actually put a little bit more in you and then taper down as you go, as it, as it itself improve. Um, I would see how it goes for the first two weeks, but I would go about a month and, but I would expect results sooner than that. Okay. Cause then you want to build up your body. The, the sleep formula is not a sleeping pill. It's not like you're taking an Ambien or a Tylenol PM or something like that. It is, uh, it is nourishing to your body. It is nourishing to your blood. And in Chinese medicine, we say that the, uh, the sleep, if it has a good foundation of blood and the heart is full, then you'll have, you'll sleep well. And that's what the sleep formula helps to nourish. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, the next question, I hope that answers for you. Um, if it doesn't, please let us know. Um, oh, so she's also asking, can she take all four at once and how much before bed? But I think you kind of answered that now at this point. Yeah, you can, you can take all four and you know do that right before bedtime. About an hour, I'd say about half hour to an hour before bedtime. Okay. Let things kind of kick in. You start following some other uh, sleep hygiene that we that we talked about, and uh, I think you'll get a good night's sleep pretty quick. Okay. So, and on that topic, this was a, a question that was emailed in to us last night, um, which you answered a little bit, but let's just reemphasize it for this individual. She had asked, "Is it better to take an over-the-counter sleeping pill and get more sleep, or not take any pill but get less sleep, even if that means only two to three hours?" Do you want me to repeat that? That's fine. Um, I, I look at situations like this. Um, as, as Chinese medicine practitioners, we're, we're not really, we, we, under our scope of practice, we shouldn't be giving, you know, uh, we shouldn't be giving the advice on how to use an over-the-counter medication that you would, medicinal medication. Okay, so I can't really comment on that. But what I can say is that do what you need to do in order to get yourself out of that pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I know in, in pain situations, for instance, I do a lot of orthopedics in my practice as well. And, and so it's like, there's certain points where sometimes, you know, sometimes the, you just need to take something a little bit stronger to get you through something. Um, you know, I, I've had, you know, lung situations where sometimes I just needed a little something stronger to get me through it in order to do that. So sometimes I would turn to something a little bit stronger. So I wouldn't make a habit of it. And, 
that's where we kind of run into problems because then our body starts to get accustomed to having that particular pill or medication to fall asleep. And then that does all kinds of numbers to our brain chemistry. And that's what we don't want. Okay. Okay. Um, here is another question from one of our viewers that's on live with us. Do you recommend taking melatonin while doing IVF um, during STEM or any of the other phases? Mm. Actually, melatonin is pretty safe relatively compared to other like um, um, medications. But um, still, as, as Albert already emphasized, we don't want to see any, like anyone um, depends on certain medication. So if you have any access to traditional medical doctor, I would strongly recommend to visit first because we need to know what causes your sleep uh, deprivation, what causes your sleep problem. Mm -hmm. So, because if you keep taking any medication so you can sleep better tonight and then next day sometime it's okay and the, the day after sometime it's sleep okay. So then can mask your problem too. Maybe you have something else you have inside. Mm -hmm. So, so I really strongly recommend you visit um, traditional medical doctor first because from the, your symptoms and the, your pulse and the, your tongue, we can diagnose this. What, what caused your sleep deprivation and then what, you know, we also can make some plan. It's custom plan. So because everyone has different, different pattern, different type, different causes. So we can like, a, uh, we can make a, a custom tailored plan and then um, along with acupuncture treatment and also Chinese herb um, formula, we can um, help patient with that. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful as well. Um, I, I know we're running over now. Do you all have time for maybe two more questions? Is that all right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. Oh, um, let's talk about um, catching up on sleep over the weekends. You know, you were talking a lot before about how. <laughs> is that myth at this point, or <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Can we have yeah, you, a more sleep yeah. on the weekend, or is that just going to throw everything at this point? Yeah, actually, it, uh, I actually catch up my sleep uh, during the weekend too. But I realize next day I feel more tired. More tired. <laughs> because, yeah. yeah, because we kind of like a break the break the uh, our biological rhythm. Mm -hmm. I call it, uh, our sleep pattern. So, so. It's okay if you can sleep one, two hours longer, but um, always have to try to wake up, even though you, uh, for example, I, I, I want to wake up similar time, not exact same time, but if you used to wake up always 7 a.m., but don't wake up after like 8 or 9, 9 a.m. Don't wake up like at 1 p.m. or something like that, because you totally break your, like, your daytime and nighttime pattern, sleep pattern. Okay, so you have like a two-hour cushion, basically. Yeah, yeah. A little bit extra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it need to be grace period. <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of times, uh, I came across the term during the research, something called sleep debt. Uh-huh. Mm, so oh, sleep yeah. debt, so basically a deficiency, D-E-B-T, right? A debt, like, right. Debt, you know, a debt of money there. Um, mm -hmm. So when it comes down to having, you know, we're paying off that debt again, um, you can't just do it all in one thing because that'll totally mm -hmm. throw off your pattern. Um, but like Solana was saying, like an hour, maybe an extra hour, maybe an extra two hours maximum. And then you start adding that up. And so you become another regular sleep pattern again. And that'll be better than like, oh, I only slept four hours that night. I'm going to slept 13 hours the next day and that'll take care of everything. It yeah. doesn't exactly work out this way. That'll, that'll really kind of throw your system off a lot more than just by adding one or two hours a night and getting that back on track again. Okay. I think one of the biggest things that we talk about, uh, that I talk to my patients about, is getting to bed a little earlier. And so making a commitment to yourself, setting a timer, calling a friend, and trying to get to sleep uh, you know, a half hour before mm -hmm. you normally do. So if you're going to sleep at midnight or 12.30, start going to bed at you know, 11.30 or midnight. And then do that for a week. And then for the next week, going to bed from 11 to 1130 and doing it that way. 
you know, I personally have an alarm on my phone says time to get ready for sleep, yeah. you know, about around 10, 15, because I'm like, all right, cool. We'll start winding down and doing that thing. Right. So that, that's kind of what I do. But in regard to you, you can't, if you're going to bed at one o'clock in the morning all the time, there's no way you're going to get to sleep at 11 the next nights. It's not going to happen, you know, very rarely, you know, consistently. So, but if you start tapering back and training yourself to do it, you can, you can do it. Okay. I think that's a really good tip. Thank you. You both have been filled with so many fantastic tips tonight. <laughs> okay. Last question. This is actually not related to sleep, but she would really like to know. Um, if she is taking bone broth and egg whites for stomach yin uh, deficiency, should this be taken on an empty stomach? Hmm. Bone broth and then egg white, right? Correct. And it's for mm -hmm. stomach yin deficiency. So it depends on her symptoms and then why. Why is she taking that uh, things? And then usually bone broth, um, if there is no nothing added, like um, nothing added, salt, salt or black pepper is very like uh, nutritious. It's very safe. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't matter if she take uh, like an empty stomach or after meal, it doesn't matter because in Asia, we eat as a meal. Like uh, we added some rice into like a bone broth to make a soup, soup out of it. So it's totally safe, fine. And egg white is also, um, it doesn't matter when, you know, it doesn't matter the you know, time of you, what time you're eating. It, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Indeficiency, usually kidney, especially kidney indeficiency is more like um, associated with your adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. Or if it like um, hormone hormone deficiency because by aging we lose a lot of hormone. Mm -hmm. So what what I suggest is enough rest. You have to rest enough so then your body can like um, rejuvenate your body. Your body can rejuvenate your system. So make a uh, balance your hormone. Back into sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you both so much. Um, a couple of comments just for our audience. I know this was a lot of material to cover. So, and Albert and Solana have been so gracious tonight. I mean, wow, how many fantastic tips did they give to us? Um, you are able to watch this episode in replay immediately following when we conclude in a moment. Um, you can also share this with others through Facebook, and this is located uh, in your Facebook video section if you need to access it in the future. Um, also, uh, on the Dow Wellness website, there is an archive area for newsletters, and you all did an uh, article about the TCM Morgan system, correct? Uh, yeah. In the March edition, so you can access that through their archive. And then um, on doubtstar.com, we have a newsletter of our own. And what we'll do is a um, more abbreviated version of showing you that diagram as well with just some of the key takeaways from this discussion. So ours will go out uh, on Saturday. Um, but really, if you want to do the deep dive, I suggest you go over to the Dow Wellness and look at the article that was prepared for March. Uh, either way, take that chart, print it out, and put it somewhere, because I know for sure I am planning to. That's something I would carry around in my wallet. I mean, now that I've learned about this, it's really something you want to pull out throughout the day and be like, oh my God, why am I feeling this way? Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the next time I wake up in the wee hours of the morning, I'm going to be like, okay, which one? No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> One great tip, eh, guys, before we go, one great tip. Each of you tell us one tip you have for us. If you do wake up in the middle of the night and now you've got to fall back asleep, what's the one thing each of you would do to try and fall asleep faster again? Breathe. Breathe. I love it. Breathe. Okay. Don't look at the clock. Just keep your eyes closed. I'm awake. I can hear things. Be aware of everything that's going on around you and just abdominal breathe. And relax your, you know, relax your body. Start. You can actually start from head down past your eyes and throat, and do a little meditation. Basically, going from your head all the way down to your toes, mm -hmm. the bottom of your feet. Love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, Anne, how about for you? 
I I usually like like easy and fast <laughs> way. So I will take this one. <laughs> I will take this one. For me, actually, I um I used to take six pills. <laughs> it, it it's very safe. Yeah, it's totally fine with me because um this is like all the plan and plant based and then some like uh, seed. So it's uh -huh. also blood tonic. So it's, there's no draw, uh, no side effect or no withdrawal effect at all. Also, uh -huh. this like oil, this uh -huh. essence oil, because if you smell something from your from your nose nose um, cavity, actually it can reach your brain in like an eight seconds. So it's really fast. So I gonna even. I, I sometimes I put this oil under your my my nose area too. Oh, I know I do the exact yeah. same. This area or you know behind yeah. your main point here, uh -huh. and then also like a like a perfume here, and then like a this way. Yeah, yep, I do exactly what you do. And if I'm flying, I do a combo of the calm mm -hmm. and the tension. Yeah. Because yeah. then you have the winter green and the lavender. Mm -hmm. So if you put it right at your nostrils, not only are you keeping yeah. your nasal passage moist. But yes. you're creating an immunity barrier, so you don't get exactly anybody else. <laughs> also, actually, it smells really good. So you can use just as your perfume too. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were very fun to create. Okay, well, thank you both so much again for tonight. This was a really fun episode to cover. I loved our little charts and our graphs and being able to just share all of these tips with everyone. That was a treat. Um, so we hope you as an audience enjoyed this too. Even if you're catching it in replay, please you know, take time to, to enjoy that. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Um, going into the month of April, this is our last episode for events in March. Uh, going into April, we have a, um, for Dear Dr. Mao, he actually is leaving tomorrow for Puerto Rico. So on April 1st, we will be posting a video from him. He is going to be sharing with you the best tips for uh, dealing with allergy season. Uh, so you'll be able to watch that from Dr. Mao uh, starting on Monday, April 1st. It's not an April Fool's, it's the truth of what you can do for best tips. And then we have Dr. Dow, who is going to be talking about reproductivity in the second week of April. We have a tele-study with a wonderful passage the third week. And then we come back the fourth week of April, I believe it's the 22nd, but you'll see in your newsletter the date for your calendar. And that will be with Dr. Mao and uh, also with Francis Lam. Um, and they will be talking about um, evolving treatments, alternative treatments related to cancer and integrative medicine. So what is going on right now of working hand in hand. Uh, so lots going on in April. Again, thank you so much for tonight. Again, thank you, Albert. Thank you, Suan. This was so much fun. And we will see all of you next month. Take care. Thank Bye. you, Tiffany. Bye, Suan. Thank you. Bye.